I know in the case of the pandemic, there's a lot of crazy conspiracy things out there and that, you know, is widespread and affecting mask use and openness to vaccination. In climate, yes, we're probably likely to get that, particularly as we succeed in getting governments to, you know, have aggressive policies, uh, you know, understanding why some people don't see this problem or feel a need to deny the problem. Uh, I think we have to be, you know, very thoughtful about who will they trust uh, to be convinced, you know, you know, who could go out and look at these coral reefs or, you know, look at the heat wave or, uh, you know, what, you know, just look at the model that shows that, you know, the beaches in uh, lots of places will be gone. Uh, you know, this is because it's a multi decade task, you know, we being shrill may not be the, the way to get going. So lots of education, you know, and that's part of the goal of the book is to get people talking about, wow, you know, if we were going to commit, you know, we, there should be a real plan, not just, you know, things that seem effective, like, you know, divesting this stock or that stock, and which is a fine thing to do if people feel uh, like that, but it's not, it, to actually reduce the emissions, you have to change the way you make steel. There's just no kind of metric or divestment or, you know, blocking traffic that alone will get rid of those emissions. So you've never just wanted to pick up the phone and call Mark Zuckerberg and say, hey, like, this is really slowing me down. Well, Mark, uh, you know, he's, you know, he's got to maintain kind of an open platform and, you know, on vaccine things, they've, you know, stepped up to try and get the egregious stuff out of there. Uh, I have a good dialogue with Mark. I think he's been put in a hard position in terms of what the government rules or what the, a company should do to let debate continue while you have the really extreme stuff that drives people uh, into sort of a non-reality position. How do you distinguish those things and who, who's supposed to do that you know, when you have millions of messages every hour? At the same time, you recently said you think Trump should and eventually will be let back on Twitter. Why support that when he spreads so much inf misinformation about issues like climate and vaccines, which you care about? Well, there's a question whether labeling uh, things is better. I mean, those messages are likely to show up somewhere. You know, it's a country with a First Amendment. And so, uh, you know, do you want to have one party have one social network and the other party have another social network. You know, this, unlike climate, you know, where I'm in talking to the best scientists and funding it, the way we draw the boundaries on social networking, I don't have that solution, but I know that uh, we need very smart people uh, at Facebook and universities uh, trying to say, where, how do you draw the line there? I haven't seen a proposal where you go, wow, if you do that, then it's as open as it needs to be and the crazy stuff goes away. And I, I, I look at every idea. Uh, so, you know, I think this is a societal challenge. Now, while you're pouring money into vaccines, some of your peers are pouring money into rockets. And I'm curious, do you think Earth will ever be more uninhabitable than Mars? Like, is this really what's going to save the human race? Well, I, I think we should preserve this planet uh, and make it hospitable to human life. Uh, the idea of Mars or even artificial planets, you know, it, it's great that other people are doing that, but I'm not involved in that. I don't see that as part of the solution. Uh, I don't think I'm missing something there. But, you know, you're talking about, you know, when you're talking about Elon Musk or, or Jeff Bezos, they're in the climate game and in a constructive way, which I'm at least glad uh, that they're putting some of their resources in this direction. So speaking of Elon, you've, you've said we need hundreds of Elon Musks. And with Tesla's expansion in places like China and India, that's only going to increase their carbon footprint. Should Tesla be more upfront about that? Well, Tesla reduces your carbon footprint. And if they get you know, a, an electric car uh, as we convert the electric generation to be zero emissions, 
is one of the few categories that you know we see a path to zero. Now it's only about 7% of emissions come from passenger cars globally. And so you can't declare victory there, but you know, as the cost of those cars comes down, the range goes up, the charge points are more numerous and standardized and quick charging, uh, you'll, you'll feel like, yes, a gasoline car, less maintenance, you know, quieter. Uh, the market will eventually take care of this. And so you won't need regulations, even though they've been used, including a tax credit, uh, to get the volume up uh, to get to that point. And so every category needs to go through that process of uh, bringing its, its green premium down dramatically. Now, I understand you own a Porsche electric car yourself. Um, Elon has in the past claimed you shorted Tesla. And I wonder if there's any truth to that. Uh, well, you know, I think Tesla's an amazing company. Uh, I wish I'd, you know, own been more on the, the the long side, but you know, I you know, it's it's great. Uh, and you know, I, I have lots of relatives who own Teslas that I've uh, helped buy for them. So you know, nothing but positive thoughts about Tesla and its role. Um, now that said, I, I'm 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 curious for your thoughts here because. Tesla could potentially make more money from its Bitcoin investment this year than profits from electric cars in all of 2020. What's your take on that? What, what's your Bitcoin take and, and the fact that the price can just go up or down based on a simple tweet from him? Well, look, Elon has tons of money and he's very sophisticated. So, you know, I'm, I don't worry that uh, you know, his Bitcoin will sort of randomly go up or down. I do think people get bought into these manias who may not have as much money to spare. So I'm not uh, bullish on Bitcoin. And, you know, I, my general thought would be uh, that, you know, if you have less money than Elon, you should probably uh, watch out. <laughs> Why aren't you bullish on Bitcoin? It's, it, look, there are things we invest in in society that produce output. Uh, Bitcoin happens to use a lot of energy. Uh, it happens to promote anonymous transactions. They're not reversible transactions. Our, the Gates Foundation does a lot in terms of digital currency, uh, but those are things where you can see who's making the transaction. Uh, so digital money is a good thing. Uh, uh, and you know, there's a different approach that's local currency and attributed, and you know, deals with all the money laundering and terrorism type regulations, and yet gives you the very com the convenience and the low cost of transaction. Uh, and so, you know, our foundation is very proud that in the pandemic, a lot of the countries we funded to do this were able to get money out to their citizens very, very efficiently. So that's something that it's not got the visibility of Bitcoin, but the move towards digital money uh, that we're very engaged in is a super positive thing uh, that eventually will get to even the poorest countries. So let's talk about the pandemic. Obviously, your other big focus in addition to climate change, the U.S. just hit 500,000 deaths. And I just wanted to take a moment there. How does that number strike you? Well, it's unbelievably. It's, you know, more than any war we've been in except the civil war, uh, you know, it's enough that I'm sure it's touched almost everybody. Uh, you know, we, we count on government to both before something bad happens and when something bad happens to uh, protect us. And it didn't work in this case. Uh, so, you know, hopefully it's a lesson going forward about investments in global health that uh, the U.S. and the U.S. cooperating with other countries need to get done uh, to be ready for the next pandemic. Um, how concerned are you about the new variants and vaccines keeping up? Well, amazingly, our foundation was studying three vaccines and trials in South Africa when the variant showed up. And so we were able to gather uh, really detailed data showing that you know, they all still had some beneficial effect uh, but particularly Novavax and Johnson and Johnson, even though they worked a little less well, were still a great tool there. And 
you know, so weirdly, the U.S. didn't uh, sequence enough to see its variants like the U.K. and even what we funded in South Africa. Now that's being remedied, just another miscue by the country that should have done the best job. So uh, we'll get on top of the variants. You know, we may need to tune the vaccines. All the manufacturers are looking through how quickly they could get that done. It'll extend. It'll add to the transmission and deaths. But, you know, if we get vaccination rates up only by at most a month or two. Are Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson doing enough to prioritize populations in developing countries? And what's the ideal shot for the developing world? No, the private sector, including those three companies, did a, a fantastic job. Uh, our, we've been backing the mRNA approach uh, for about a decade now. Sadly, it's not that mature, and so you can't scale it up as much as we'd like, nor is it cheap. And so the vaccines three through five, AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson, and Novavax can be scaled up through uh, Indian factories to a higher degree. So for developing countries, those three and sending the right ones to the right place will be most of the solution, not to take away from anything that Pfizer, who funded its work, or Moderna did, uh, but those will mostly land in rich countries. So at this point, what are the biggest headwinds that you see in the vaccine manufacturing process? Yeah, well, every day uh, there's a complex discussion about, okay, what are, you know, do we have enough glass vials for fill finish? Do we have all these different ingredients uh, that come from different countries? I do think some of the, you know, vaccine nationalism where, People are trying to look good in their own country by somewhat blocking things going around. That's, you know, there's huge downside in that. Uh, you know, we need to get the vaccines out in large numbers. We need to end this epidemic globally. And from the beginning, the voice of the foundation is included, not only moving faster, but this equity question. And uh, over the next four or five months, um, the, the world... Uh, can behave well, it's mostly governments now uh, that are limiting uh, how much we can help, um, you know, countries that don't have vaccine factories. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.